He's back, Dr. Laurie Goldstein. He and I share our skepticism on windmills. And now, Laurie, in your new article in the, in the Sun newspapers, you say that the federal government is looking at regulations treating windmills. I didn't know the feds were in that business. What are they getting involved? And you've got a top five list of mistakes not to make. So first tell yeah. me, what are the feds doing? And then we'll jump right into your top five yeah. no-nos. So but the, the provinces, the other provinces have asked the federal government to come up with some guidelines on wind turbines, which are these huge structures, 30, 30 you know, 40 stories high. Yeah. Um, and like so, the skyscraper. Right. And, and what alarmed me was that in some of the, of, of the reportage on it, they were saying that, well, we're going to use Ontario, Dalton McGuinty's wit, as a model. Huh. Dalton McGuinty made every possible mistake you could make. Well, you got a list of five. And that's five. what I want to go through. Okay, well, yeah. you call it spitting in the yeah, wind, that, which is, uh, you know, I learned as a child that's never a good thing to do, at least no. to spit up with. Let's go through you. Number five, lack of democracy. What do you mean by that? First thing that Dalton McGuinty did in the Green Energy Act was he took away the rights of local municipalities to have any say over the location of wind turbines. Imagine if this had been done for a coal fire plant, a nuclear plant, or the Northern Gateway yeah, pipeline. Yeah, pipeline, yeah. yeah. So basically, communities were helpless. Uh, developers came in, they approached some people to rent, you know, a property to put up these things, and people just had these things sprung on them, and they had no recourse. They had nowhere to go. Couldn't go to the local council to complain, because the local council didn't have any... So first was taking away the rights sure. of people to a say in where these things go. Uh, first thing. Yeah. Number four, lack of expertise. And what do you mean by that? That's right. The Ministry of Environment's own staff warned the government that they were the noise guidelines they had weren't adequate enough, that they had no way, good, reliable way of monitoring them, that their technology for determining setbacks, and it's half a kilometer uh, in, um, in Ontario, um, that, they're, they're, that it, wasn't, it, it wasn't a good enough standard, and that they had no way of enforcing. Basically, the environment, the environment staff said, we can't do what you're asking us, and it was all ignored. Can you imagine? And your point is correct. I mean, I'm really focused on oil, as you know. Yeah. Yeah. If they had taken this approach, well, we don't know, yeah. we don't know what the risks are, yeah. but just do yeah. it anyways. What's yeah. number three? What's your third warning? This, in one way, is the most insidious. Lack of honesty. What happened was, there was a whole theory of, about uh, the noise that comes from wind turbine. It's a low-frequency pulse. And there's a controversy over whether it like calls... Bold. Yeah, bold. And, and whether it call, causes health effects. Now, yeah. now we can get... But there, there's a, de a global debate about yeah. that. But what happened here was that these things went up, hundreds of people who were close to them started to complain. Yeah. Sleeplessness, irritability, inability to concentrate. Yeah. The government suppressed those complaints. What do you mean by suppress? When people called in to say that they were experiencing these things, they were told they were the only people in their neighborhoods huh. experienced. In fact, there were hundreds of complaints going on all over the province. You know what, this would be called a cover-up if it, this was yeah. Silkwood or, or, uh, yeah, or, or, or if, if it was big business instead yeah. of big government. You know, I was reading in your paper a very interesting point. Noise, if you're in control of the noise, like if you're playing a stereo loud or if you're talking yeah. loud, you don't mind it because you're in control of it yeah. and it's meaningful yeah. to you. So are you in control and is it meaningful to you? Yeah. Whereas if you're trapped by it, so yeah. you're not in control, and if it's not meaningful, like you're not imagine, creating it. Imagine many people, they went to rural areas to live. To get away to, from the to, noise. To get away from this. Then it sprung on them no local input, and suddenly these mothers are up, yeah. and they're complaining, and, it's on and, and it's nobody often. will yeah. listen to yeah. them, and the province is pretending yeah. that other people are yeah. complaining. It, it was, it, it really was a horror show. All I say is, imagine if this had been done for a pipeline. Yeah, for a pipeline. Or for, for coal. coal-fired yeah. electricity plant. Lack of research. The province's medical officer of health, doing a, a literature review, has said, it probably, there's, there's not a direct link, we don't see a direct link, but what people like Dr. Robert McMurtry, the former dean of the University of Western Ontario, who's been very involved in this, started out as a supporter of wind, wanted to put up a turbine, started hearing all this complaints, said, do your own independent research. Yeah. Talk to these people who yeah. say they're suffering, do a double-blind study, yeah. talk to people who aren't affected by, see what yeah. they're, and they won't do it. Huh. And we know why they won't do it. They, they won't do it because they're scared of the answers. Last reason we shouldn't follow McGinty's plan. Well, this is the one that I hope provinces, the other provinces... Now, what do you mean to. by lack of intelligence? Well, <laughs> McGinty ramps this thing through, has all these problems, causes a great uproar. In the last election, he lost his majority. He lost it by one seat. Wind opponents, there were various organizations of wind opponents, they targeted ten ridings in the province. The Liberals lost every one of those ridings, huh. including three cabinet ministers, huh. including the environment minister. Huh. And it shows you, you pay a political price 
when you ram yeah. things into the... And these aren't even the tall ones. These oh, aren't no, even... These are, these are mini. No, those no, those, no, are, those no. aren't even 100 feet. You're, no. you're talking about ones that and these are four not, or five. And these are not Dutch windmills. Yeah. These are big yeah. steel yeah. structures. And if we're going to bring them in, fine. Let's have proper setbacks. Yeah. Let's have proper noise limits. Yeah. And let's let people have a say in it as we would a nuclear plant. Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Oh. So Western Ontario, ignore everything Ontario did, do the exact opposite. Well, let's hope that Stephen Harper doesn't follow this guy. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I would say. Yeah. Thanks for being here, my friend. Very persuasive. And I learned a lot about, about noise and what causes us to be irritable by reading people your People got piece. screwed. Yeah. And I don't want other Canadians across the country screwed the way these people were. Thanks for standing up for us. Hey, folks, stick around.